Giant Squid Mystery of the Deep by Jennifer Dessling, illustrated with photographs by Pamela Johnson. Chapter 1, December 1997. Far away off the coast of New Zealand, a fishing boat floats on the ocean's waves. It's a large boat, and it will stay out to sea for many months. The crew drops big nets way down deep. This helps them catch more fish. Then they pull in the nets. Today they get a big surprise. In one of the nets, there is something dark red and long, about 25 feet long. It's no fish, that's for sure. The fishermen know what it is. It is a dead giant squid, one of the most mysterious creatures in the world. They also know there's one man who will be very happy to hear about this, but he will have to wait. They still have many weeks of fishing. Chapter 2, March 1998. Three months later, Neil Landman gets a call. Neil works for the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. He's an expert on squids, but it is late at night, and he's on a vacation in Italy. Who would call him now? It's a friend from New Zealand. His friend is also a squid expert. We have a giant squid, he says to Neil. Do you want it? Neil can't believe it. A giant squid? He has hoped and hoped for years to have one for the museum. Of course he wants it. It is no wonder Neil is so excited. The giant squid is a great mystery. It lives deep in the ocean, nearly a mile below the surface. There are no giant squids in zoos. No one has ever caught one alive. So not much is known about these creatures. We don't know for sure how long they live, how quickly they grow, how fast they swim, or whether they live together or alone. Every once in a while, part of the dead giant squid will wash up on a beach but usually people find just a long tentacle or two. Long ago, people thought these tentacles had to belong to a huge monster. They told stories about a monster called the Kraken. With its long arms and giant suckers, the Kraken grabbed ships. It pulled them under the water. It ate all the sailors. Today we know there are no Krakens. There are giant squids, but they are not monsters. We know they don't attack people. A giant squid is just like a regular squid, but much bigger. A squid is usually less than one foot long. A giant squid can grow up to 60 feet long. A giant squid also has the biggest eyes of any animal. Its eyes can be as big as soccer balls. The giant squid has a short body called a mantle. This is where its brain and eyes and mouth are but most of the squid's length comes from its eight arms and two long feeding technicals. The squid is a smooth swimmer. It does not need its arms to swim the way you do. Instead, the squid sucks water into its mantle. Then it tightens the muscles in its body to force the water out the funnel. This pushes the squid forward. Small fins on the side of its body help the squid to steer. It shoots through the water like a bullet. Squids are cousins to the octopus. Everyone knows an octopus has eight arms, just like a squid, but an octopus does not have the two extra long feeding technicals. Squids and octopi both belong to the group of animals called cephalopodas. You say it like this, cephalopods. Cephalopods are strong and smart and fast. They have no bones in their bodies. They can squeeze into small spaces. There they hide and wait for food. The giant squid's body is perfect for catching other animals. Rows of suckers line its arms. Each sucker has a ring of sharp teeth. The giant squid is fierce. It grabs a fish with its arms. The tooth suckers sink into the skin. The fish cannot get away. Then the squid drags the fish to its mouth. Besides fish, giant squids also eat smaller squids and shrimp. Like other cephalopods, the giant squid has a beak in its mouth. A beak? Yes. This beak is a lot like a bird's beak. It is very sharp. A giant squid's beak can bite through the steel cable of a ship. 
The giant squid has only one real enemy, the sperm whale. Far below the ocean waves, sperm whales battle giant squids. How do we know? Giant squids' beaks are often found in the bellies of sperm whales, and the skin of the sperm whales show that the squid put up a fight. The squid suckers leaves lots of scars on the whale, but no one has ever seen a battle between these two mighty creatures. There are many things we do not know about giant squids. Some smaller squids can change their color to blend in with rocks or coral. Can giant squids do that? We don't know. Other squids glow in the dark. Do giant squids? We don't know. Some cephalopods squirt out ink to confuse an enemy. Can giant squids squirt ink? Maybe, maybe not. It's still a mystery. Chapter 3, New York City, June 1998. Neil Landman wants to solve some of the mysteries of the giant squid, but most of all he wants to see his squid. He paces back and forth in the airport waiting room. His whole staff paces back and forth with him. The squid arrives in a huge plastic case. It is frozen solid. That's how the fishermen kept it so long. A truck takes the squid to the museum. Now the interesting work can begin. Neil starts to defrost it. He injects it with a chemical that will keep it fresh. It is a strong chemical. It is not healthy to breathe in it. Neil and his helpers have to wear masks. Two weeks later, they wash the squid with water. It is kept in a big tank. They refill the tank with alcohol. Then the real work begins. Neil measures the squid. He weighs it. He examines it from the top of its mantle to the tip of its tentacles. The museum takes pictures. The scientists will learn a lot from this squid. Already Neil has found out something interesting. The squid weighs only 200 pounds and is 25 feet long. At first people thought it was a baby, but it is not a baby at all. It is a full-grown male squid. Most of the giant squids the scientists had seen before were female. Neil's squid is the first full-grown male. This means female squids are much bigger than males. Neil cuts out the squid's beak. He puts it in a jar. It is beautiful. It looks almost like a shell, brown and yellow. But why did he cut it out? Now he can learn about more how the beak works. And he wants to be able to show it to the people. It was hard to see when it was inside the squid. Lots of people want to see Neil's squid. People who work in the museum, squid experts, students who are studying cephalopods, so Neil set it up times to show off the squid. The giant steel tank is wheeled out. The lid is taken off. Everyone steps back at first. The smell is very strong. And then the people crowd in to look. It is an incredible sight. The squid is famous. Reporters write articles about it in newspapers. There is something about giant squids that interests everyone. Right now, only a few people can see the squid, but Neil hopes that soon hundreds of people will be able to see it every day. He hopes that the squid will be put on display in the museum. Then kids from all over could learn more about this great mystery of the deep.